and we're going to create a new class. We're going to create a new class called string reverse. So I'll click on new class. I'll type string reverse and I'll open this up in our editor. And we might as well put in our GitHub name and today's date. And we can get rid of all the template stuff. So for simplicity and ease of just running this method, this is going to be a public static method. So we can just run it directly from BlueJay. And this method is going to take one parameter of type string, and it's going to return a reference to a string. Um, and the return string will have all of the characters in the reverse order compared to the parameter. So we'll call this method reverse and it'll take one parameter of type string. Another way to think about recursion, and you may like this, um, is think about a really lazy way to solve a problem. Okay, And what I mean by that is rather than trying to solve the entire problem, instead let's just solve one small part of it, take one step toward a solution, and have someone else solve the rest of the problem. And we don't have to worry about how that someone else solves the rest of the problem. We just trust that when we get the answer back, it'll be the correct answer. And if we need to, we can modify that in some way. Okay? So it's kind of like a lazy, you know, think of it as like a lazy algorithm where we only do one step at a time. Um, in reality, it's probably a really good example of decomposition in that like computational thinking pillar. Um, but we can also think about it just trying to be lazy in our approach. So if we have a string and we think about like, I don't want to reverse this entire string. That's way too much work. How about instead, I just take the first character off the string. I have someone else reverse the rest of the string. And when it comes back to me reversed, I'll just put the first character at the end of the string and we'll be done. So let's write some, let's write some code for that. So the, what we're basically doing is we need to like make the problem simpler to solve. So we must make the problem simpler. simpler. So we can say, We'll grab the first character and I'll store that in a local variable first char. I'm going to keep using the substring method because it's good to review that. That's one of the required methods. So the substring method, the first argument is the index of the character to start. And we want to get the first character, so that's index 0. The second argument is the index of the character 1 past the last one we're including. So if we only want the first character, we'd say substring 0, comma 1. And then we'll create another local variable for the rest of the string. And here we can use substring where the first argument is, where there's only one argument, and it's index 1, so we'll start at the second character. And since there is no second argument, it goes through the end of the, the string. So that's how we're making the problem simpler. We'll deal with the first character. Someone else can deal with a simpler problem, which is a string with one fewer characters. So now we actually do the recursion. We actually recurse. And what this looks like in Java is we call this method. By this method, I mean the reverse method, the method that we're actually in. So we call this method with the simpler problem. So this method, the reverse method, returns a string. So we better remember that. That's going to be the rest of string reversed. That's a long variable name. But we're going to call the reverse method, and we'll pass the simpler pro problem, which is rest of string. <clears throat> I shared earlier that there are two requirements to actually have our recursion work. One of them is that the problem gets simpler. So it's really important when we call the reverse method, and we're in the reverse method, so when we call ourselves, that the parameter that we pass is a simpler version of the problem. So we can't pass str 
That's the same problem. But rest of string is a simpler problem because it has one fewer characters. This part can be a little uncomfortable. We may not really see how this is going to work. But at this point, we're just going to trust that when we ask someone to reverse the rest of the string, when it's the string that's returned will be the rest of the string reversed, and we're just going to keep going from there. Okay? So as an example, if the string passed in was cat, C-A-T, we'll grab the letter C, we'll call reverse recursively with the string A-T. We're not going to worry about how it happens, but we're going to trust that when it comes back, it will be reversed and be T A, and we can just put a C at the end. So let's do that. Let's create a local variable called str reversed, <coughs> and it will equal the rest of the string reversed concatenated with first char. And that's what we will return. So as I mentioned earlier, there were two requirements that we have to make sure we meet or else our method will never stop running. And we met the first one. We're passing along a simpler problem when we recurse, so that's good. But we didn't meet the other one, which was we need that terminating condition. Um, so let's add that at the very start of the method. Must have a terminating case. And I think for this algorithm, there's two potential terminating cases that make sense. Um, you could say that a string with a single character um, is already reversed, and you could just return it, and that would, that would be fine. Perhaps a more general terminating case is that the empty string is also reversed, because there are no characters in there to reverse. So let's do the empty string one. We'll just say if str.equals the empty string, return, it, return that empty string. And that's what our terminating case looks like. So let's try this out. Um, and to help you visualize this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a breakpoint at the start of this method, and I'm going to step through it in the debugger so we can see, like, what does this look like as we reverse the string? So I'm going to run this method, and I'm going to pass the string cat. And I'm going to move the debugger around so we can see it. We can see our code. Here we go. And right now, we are at the breakpoint. We're in the reverse method. The parameter str is cat. That all sounds good. As I step through this, um, we can see where we're going to make the problem simpler. So we're going to store the first character in the variable first char, and it has a value of c. We're going to get the rest of the string and store that in a local variable with the AT. Um, and here's the interesting part. Here's where we're about to recurse. One thing I want to point out here is that recursion only works when it involves local variables and parameter variables. Okay? Um, we, we can't be using instance variables to store these intermediate values. And I'll, I'll show you why right, right here. When I step into this call to reverse, and I pass as a parameter rest of string, which is AT, you're going to see now that all of a sudden we jumped up here to the beginning of the method. Most importantly, what you'll see is over here in the left um, panel of the debugger where it says call sequence, there's now two calls to reverse. If I click back on the first one, the green highlight shows us where we were. We're right here waiting for the reverse call to return. But the other one, shows our second call to reverse and the fact that we're at the start of that method. And as I step through here, we'll see that string equals AT, first char will equal A, 
rest of string will equal t, and we're about to call reverse again. And I want to really emphasize this point about how we have to use local variables and we have to use parameters because each time you call a method, we get a new, a new copy, a new chunk of memory to hold the parameter and all the local variables. So in our second call to reverse, here's the values of the variables, a, t, a, and t. But when I go back to the first call to reverse, we can see they still have the same values. It's still C, A, T, C, and A, T. If we try to use instance variables for this, all these recursive calls would have the same value because with an instance variable, there's only a single value for the entire instance, that is for the entire object. So instance variables would not work in this recursive approach at all. <coughs> I'm going to step into this one. And we're going to see that now we're in the third call to reverse. And the string is t. And so the first character is t, and the rest of the string is the empty string. And if I step again, we're in reverse again. This is our fourth call. The dragon referred to, I was like pretty deep in my like dream stack or something like that. Um, Blue Jay labels this a call sequence. Often this is called the call stack. Um, and that's what the dragon was alluding to and it talked about its, its dream stack. So we can now see we have a call sequence or a call stack of four different calls to reverse. So here though the string does equal the equal string, I'm sorry, does equal the empty string, and we're about to return. And what we're about to step through is what the dragon referred to as Martin working his way back um, back up to the solution for 5 factorial. Okay. So as we return this string, we're going to see that our call stack goes from 4 calls to reverse to 3. And when I step through this, rest of string reversed gets assigned the empty string. That's what that fourth call returned. And now we're going to do our step where we take that string and we concatenate to the end first char, and we'll see a T put on the end. And now we're going to return the t. And when we do that, now we're down to only two calls to reverse in the call sequence. We assign that return value of the t to rest of string reversed. And we're going to concatenate on the end first char, which is the a. And sure enough, now we're about to return t a. Okay? So it is actually working. And when we get back to the original call to reverse here, I said we were just going to trust that whoever was solving the simpler problem would solve it correctly. And sure enough, when we step, rest of string reversed is equal to TA. Okay, it did work out correctly. We can just concatenate the C on the end, and we can return our final answer of the string of TAC. Um, and that's what's shown here. So I think stepping through it in the debugger is really important because it's hard to otherwise visualize what's really going on um, and, and how this works. But when coming up with the recursive algorithm, the, the advantage of solving a problem recursively is you don't have to have the whole solution in your head. It's, okay, it's completely okay and expected to say, I'm just going to make a small step toward the solution and someone else is going to solve the simpler problem. And you don't worry about solving the simpler problem because it's going to get in the way of you writing your recursive algorithm. As long as you consistently have a simpler problem to solve, and as long as you have the terminating condition like we do here, it will work out. Okay. The other thing, though, I want to emphasize is that we don't have to do this recursively at all. Um, so just to hit that home, let's take just a moment to write a non-recursive solution, an iterative solution. Basically, the solution you would have written in Chapter 4 last semester if I asked you to reverse a string. So let's make another public static method that returns a string called reverse iter. And it takes one parameter of type string. And we'll create a local variable called str reverse, just like we had in our recursive solution. But in this case, we're going to solve it iteratively, meaning we're just going to have a for loop. 
So just like we would have done, like I said, back in chapter four, we'll say four int i equals zero, i is less than str dot length, i plus plus. So this will allow us to iterate through every index of all the characters in the string. And we'll just iteratively build up the reverse string. And at each step, we'll take the character at index i, but I'm still going to use substring instead of char at because this is part of our AP Java subset. So we'll start at the character at index i, and we'll go up to but not including the character at i plus 1. So that gets us a single character. So we'll take that character, whatever it is, and we'll concatenate it in front of our string, string reversed. And if you think about this, when we get to the last character in the string, string reversed will have all of the characters except that last one. And so that last one needs to become the first. So that's why we do the substring first um, and then concatenate it to the rest of the reverse string. And then we'll just return this. So try this out. Compile it, run it, um, and then verify that it works just like our recursive solution.